from Provo, Utah, this is the Ultimate Final Fantasy Podcast with your hosts, Joseph DeGolier and Caleb Schweiz. This is Ultima Final Fantasy. Welcome to another episode, another review episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. I am Joe. And I am Caleb. And today we're going to be talking about Final Fantasy X-2. Yes, this day is uh, the, uh, long finally waited. upon us. Yes. Yeah. We, we've been told many things, um, many lies about this game. and Many uh, lies? Well, I mean, there's a lot of people that are super into X-2. Oh, are you saying that perhaps our opinions may not be in X-2's favor? Perhaps. There's a chance. Perhaps. Okay. Well, that's a good warning to those who love this game. Yeah, we might not love it quite as much. <laughs> There's good things about it. Yeah. <laughs> but before we get into too much more, be sure to check us out on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Ultima Final Fantasy. Tweet me at UFF Podcast. You can tweet me at Joseph Egolier. Follow us on Twitch where we're live streaming right now. Finally, again. It's been a while since we've done these. But, it's been a uh, while. We do that, and then I live stream as much of the gameplay as I can handle, and <laughs> yeah, sometimes I just need to be off cam, though. I just can't do it. Uh, yeah, and for uh, for everything, go to ultimafinalfantasy.com. One more thing about uh, our Patreon donors as well. So you can support us on Patreon. One dollar a month gives you the episodes as soon as we're done mixing them. Uh, so usually our Patreon funds kind of get flushed out with our uh, our bills for the month, right, twice. So like... Yeah. The websites, and we have uh, the Adobe software suite that we we have to we have to get for Photoshop and for Adobe Premiere, which we mix the episodes on, or not Premiere, but uh, Adobe Audition. Sorry. Audition, yeah. Um, we do use Premiere though. We do use Premiere every once in a while as well, and uh, and then our lips and hosting fees and everything basically goes through there. Now we finally got enough money, kind of like saved up. From our Patreon funds. Last week, I said we were going to drill holes in the other table. Drill, baby, drill. Yeah. And uh, about 10 minutes after I said that, we decided, you know what? I think we have enough to go to Ikea and kind of get something, you know, whatever we can do. And we went to Ikea, and basically we got a separate tabletop, a separate leg so that we could save some money. And then we poked holes in the... In the, in this table, and now we have a brand new podcasting table. And look, I'm moving the table around, and whatever sound you're hearing is a microphone going back and forth. Yeah, it, ignore the screen shake. There's no, uh, there's nothing wrong with this table yet, and uh, it's just a beautiful table. Uh, there is a YouTube video if you guys didn't see it. Um, it's yeah, it's on our YouTube channel. Just us thanking the Patreon donors. Thank you guys uh, who have uh, who have supported us. We really appreciate it for the table. We do indeed, and we are looking at catching up on some of the uh, pledges, some of the rewards. Um, we got a few episodes that we're, we're going to be kicking out here. In the oh yeah, that's while. right. That's right. We do have a. Uh, we do have at least. I know one that's at least planned. Yeah, the there's people. one planned, and there's probably like three owed. Oh, okay, <laughs> scheduling. So <laughs> seems like the norm. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. So. Uh, Shit, have you, uh, anyway, before we start this review of 10-2, I mean, where are you in last mission? Last mission, I am still on level 15, um, and, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to, I'm rearing to, to end the game at level 80. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> you got a little ways to go. I there. got a little ways to go, but the game isn't that difficult. I mean, I followed kind of a, uh, there's not really any guides for the game because everything is different. It's sort of like Diablo 2. That way, every single level just changes yeah, randomly generated. Uh, based upon you know what you're playing. But there are some like tips and hints as far as like what dress spheres are the best and what to what to go with um, and like what enemies to avoid and stuff like that. And I, I it was basically a one sheet of paper kind of thing, and I oh, followed right. it. Yeah, and I'll, I'll give you the guide because the, otherwise that game. I don't know how many times you would have to play that thing in order to finally grasp it because yeah. the tutorial is terrible and uh, just overall it's just 
nonsense. <laughs> yeah, that's what I got out of it when I played the tutorial in in this fucking thing is like god awful. We're talking like yeah, 25 bad. 30 minutes of content. And that's that's just fucking ridiculous for a game. <laughs> like do it as I'm playing or something like that. Don't And it really doesn't even it really doesn't everything. even make sense either. Like it's giving you so much information. It's kind of like the the junction tutorial in FF8, I would yeah, say. Yeah, it's just like... Oh. It's giving you so much information. It's just going. It's it's gone from your brain. You're like, how does this work within the game? You know, it's like reading an entire rule book of a game. Really, the best play, the best way to like learn a board game is to... Is to play it. Is to kind of start playing it and just, you know, have the rule book next to you and start checking right, yeah. it. Um, the the best way to play a board game is not read the entire rule book first because you're... you're I, I don't know what what's the percentage that you're most likely gonna forget like it, what seventy percent like yeah something like that I don't know <laughs> it's it's really it's 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 not great but the game is the game's all right I I've heard it's kind of a, ahead of its time I've never seen any game like it um so I, uh, we'll see what I think on level on level eighty but I am on level fifteen and I'm I'm doing okay I think that's good I haven't really started I did play it for a little while but I died so I was like meh I'm done <laughs> it's uh, I'm good yeah so uh, I'll have more updates on that next week mm-hmm. hopefully next week I'll be done with the thing so. It's kind of what I want. Either that or we'll have a huge news week next week because there's a lot of stuff to catch up on. Yeah, next time we do an episode that's not Ten Two's review, uh, I think we should just do a news episode. There's so much news, and Shinru, you know, God bless him, he's been putting up news this entire time. Yeah. And it's like, oh, we'll get to it. <laughs> yeah, it's too, uh, we're blasting through these games too fast for these reviews. I guess, I guess. Uh, Eleven will slow that down, I think, a little bit, maybe. Um, we'll Perhaps. have reviews though for the different sections pretty regularly, I'd imagine. Well, don't worry, I am going into my senior year of college, and I am like one hundred percent sure the games will slow down um, within like a month. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> if you if you're thinking we're having too many game reviews, don't you worry, it'll slow down from here. I don't know if there's a <laughs> single soul that listens to our show that's like too many reviews, too many reviews. Slow it down. We need more. We need more filler episodes. We need more cooking episodes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's probably like three people that think that. I hate it when they call those filler episodes. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah. Well, I mean, these are the... These are the, the meat. Ones. Yeah, the these meat, are the meat. The, the meat of the show, yeah. Some shows would just wait until they were done with the games in order to, in order to put out an episode, but no. No, yeah. we put out an episode weekly for you guys. That's right. So, um, Schweiss... Uh, we don't do news on reviews. We don't do reviews on reviews. Let's get right into it. Let's talk about Final Fantasy X too. Let's do it. So... Final Fantasy X-2 was released for the PS2 on March 13th, 2003 in Japan, on November 18th in America, and February 19th, 2004 in Europe. Later, an HD remaster, which is what we both played, uh, would come out for the PS3 and finally the PS4 um, just last year, in fact. Um, and now it's on Steam as well. Like, you, you can get a hold of this fucking game. Yeah, it's not a tough one anymore. It once was. I mean, when it was just PS2, it had the same had the same toughness as Final Fantasy XII to get a hold of, really. Um, but since they remastered ten, they were like, well, fuck it. We'll just throw ten two in there and have it as an HD collection for you both. Say, you say toughness to get a hold of, but, I mean, There's PS2 a stuff that. during the PS3 era, not that big of a deal. You know what? It's not that big of a deal any either as of right now. Like, I could go find a copy of 12. You got to get a PS2. In a day. <laughs> yeah, but I can find a PS2 pretty easily. My PS2 broke. Yeah. I don't trust the machines anymore. My Xbox lasted more. It lasted longer than that PS2 lasted. Yeah, well, you did get the slim PS2. Those things are shit. Yeah, well... 
It was to be the first ever direct sequel to a main series Final Fantasy game. Kids, Joy. Doesn't, doesn't that blow your mind right now? It uh, it kind of does. Yeah, this is what this a place was to start. This was pre uh, compilation of Final Fantasy VII. This was, of course, pre FF13's uh, trilogy. Right. Um, there was no plan for a sequel. In fact, uh, with FF10, but with the short video called Eternal Calm, which we reviewed last time, which we didn't know anything about when we when we reviewed it. Apparently, that video was released with a special edition of FF10 in Japan, as well as like uh, like on a DVD that came with certain gaming magazines in Japan. It was just like this short video that uh, that the fans apparently uh, liked enough that they decided uh, let's continue FF10 story. I mean, on top of Final Fantasy X being the second largest Final Fantasy game ever, so they're like, oh yeah, it's a good it's a good time to make a sequel to this. Um, although many people in the company were hesitant about doing a sequel, especially uh, Kazushige Nojima, who expressed his doubts. Um, Yoshinori Kitase decided that his team was ready for a challenge. You know what I bet the, the final selling point was? What do you think? Ah! Uh, the, oh, moment they, the moment they ripped that bad boy out. Jesus Christ. No. Kitase was fucking sold. Yeah, that was the first thing. Like, we don't have any ideas for a game, just this song. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. he's like, exactly. do it. <laughs> Not only was their challenge to do a sequel, but to attempt to make a game centered entirely around female characters. They they really wanted to challenge the team with right. all these sorts of like, let's New do this things. and this and this. Yeah. The game uh, was also a, attempting to go away from the macho female characters, most Hollywood action movie stars. So instead of just doing female characters and making them dude like dude like, I yeah. guess you could say that. Um, and that was kind of their idea. They decided, no, let's make them feminine, very feminine heroes and overall make the game very, you know, I say feminine, but I think more childlike yeah. Yeah, like feminine is like an insult. Four year it. old girl, not <laughs> Yeah. Well I mean that is what uh that is what they're into, right? Uh, so this <laughs> created a lighthearted feel uh for the entire game basically and a uh I would say a brain hurting difference uh for from the more somber, I would say Final Fantasy ten. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um and with the four-year-old girl thing, that's a joke, guys. I'm not not serious. I don't need a correction next next week. Being like, well, technically, thirteen is the the uh, favorite age. Anything uh, well, like that. Look, man, if people cared about political correctness, uh, if our listeners really cared about political correctness, they would not be our listeners. <laughs> that's true. There would be no Team Schweiss. No, team I, I don't think there would be a Team Schweiss. That's definitely <laughs> true. I mean, you. Uh, I'm just. I'm not even going to go into it. I'm not. That's all right. I don't need you to. (laughs) So uh, there was also a purposeful change in the theme for the game uh, for Final Fantasy X. So Final Fantasy X was all about gaining independence. As you remember, remember there was these strict rules. Summoner must do this. You're going from point A to point B. And then ten two, it was all about the consequences of that independence. Right, yeah. Um, So that's kind of what they were going for as far as the theme was concerned although i didn't see that many consequences um there were just kind of like two political parties that just didn't get along and that's all i saw out of yeah the whole thing. I, it was kind of cheapened i yeah it it seems uh we'll get more into that in in the uh in uh in the story review I would like to say, I remember I was listening to a podcast um, with the writer of, fuck, what was it? Neighbors 2, the sorority thing. And he also, I think, wrote the first Neighbors uh, with Seth Rogen and, right. and all that. Um, and he was talking about uh, making a sequel. And I know Neighbors 2 did okay as far as, as, far as critical uh, reviews were concerned. But he was talking about how he went back and watched a whole bunch of sequels to movies before writing the sequel to neighbors. And, um, he noticed one thing about the sequels to movies that worked were sequels that had basically the same theme as the first movie. Right. Yeah. That's, you know, what works, go with it. Yeah. Kind of thing. And now I'm not saying that's a hard and fast rule, but it does seem about right. Like if you think of Godfather two, he just gets further in to uh, solidifying that 
Michael Corleone is his father, right? Mm-hmm. That's that's it's the same theme, the, the same underlying uh, the meaning behind the behind the piece. So the fact that Final Fantasy X two kind of like. Uh, turned itself uh, as far as a theme um, from Final Fantasy X, I think it's just another thing that makes it so different from FF10 and makes it kind of seem out of place to me uh, so far. So the development time for FF10-2 was very short uh, compared to that of most FF games, according to uh, Tetsuya Nomura, anyway. Uh, taking an estimated year and a half less time than the development of 10. Uh, this was due to all of the reuse of many character models, uh, so it's not like they had to start from scratch. They yeah, used the same sense. engine and everything and didn't, didn't improve the graphics at all, which is unusual for for square that's for sure it is they're normally top dog as far as that's concerned yeah uh, the music would be composed by sorry about these names noriko matsueda and takahito eguchi uh composers for the much maligned game the bouncer oh, by the jesus way. uh the most famous song from the game uh, one of two pop songs was the ballad 1000 words which was sung by kuni koda she also sung the other song in japan and uh, uh, a woman named Jade Vil- Villalon <laughs> for, <laughs> for the English edition. Um, Ten Two would go on to sell 1.94 million copies in Japan, the highest selling game of that year in Japan, by the Ooh, way. Wow. And 1.85 million in America. Uh, that's kind of odd that uh, the American one didn't quite sell as much as the Japanese. That is weird. That's normally, unusual. Yeah, normally that's, we outdo them. That's a, that's a Dragon Quest. Yeah. That's a Dragon Quest number right there. Um, it was also well acclaimed, more so in Japan, for its departure from the Final Fantasy form. Its focus on side quests and kind of openness. Uh, its political, I guess, what they thought was an interesting political background. <laughs> and its overall uniqueness uh. from anything the players had seen before. Basically, this is the most unique game ever that we've ever seen. Uh, and I'm not uh, disagreeing with that. This game is bizarre. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that was one of the things where, like, IGN was like, it's just so different. You have to give it props. It's yeah. just so different. I don't know about that. But I ask you, does unique really mean good? Does it twice? Uh, no. No. Not necessarily. You want to get into story? Let's do it. All right. So, the story starts out at a terrible, god-awful pop concert. It's it's the thing that has made me dread. That fucking song has made me dread playing this game. Um, that song, not as bad as Eyes on Me, but pretty fucking close. I, ugh. Just the pain that I feel when the game starts up and Yuna, we think, is, uh, is she's a pop star? What the fuck is this? Yeah, I agree. It's uh, it's defamation of the 10. But anyway, it starts out with the terrible god awful. What can I do for you song? Right? <laughs> Just, just blasting, making the ears bleed. Yeah, someone and then, every, like then you're like, let's turn off, let's t- turn down the volume quick before yeah. someone hears. <laughs> My neighbors will hear this. <laughs> they'll think I'm a, they'll think I'm a nine year old girl. Yeah, and then we also get this. <laughs> the game almost takes on a Charlie's Angels kind of feel. They're like uh, YRP in position, and they like Jesus. go to save Yuna, which really ends up being they're saving Yuna's garment grid. From a woman that's barely clothed, uh, with hearts everywhere. Her name is LeBlanc. I would like to say the neckline plunging into her pubic hair. Yeah, that is... 
she leaves little to the imagination. <laughs> Which I guess I'm okay with, but I just don't understand why you'd walk out wearing that. Uh, so YRP obviously stands for Yuno Riku and a new... Uh, smoking hot emo chick named Pain, by the way. Yeah. That's, that's how I feel about Pain. Yeah, you're, is that how you feel about Squall? Because yeah. it's basically so Squall. Not only are they called YRP, but they are also called the Gullwigs. Oh, so okay. not enough nicknames for the fucking group. Uh, who also call themselves Sphere Hunters as well, and we'll get into that. Because that's a job title. Yeah. So they're Sphere Hunters searching for rare spheres, which were the things that were dropped that held recordings of the past from yeah. FF10. Yeah, you could find spheres that okay. people would record events with. And basically they're stealing them from people who they think shouldn't have them. Real Robin Hood. Movie. Yeah, yeah. So... uh we talked about Yuna or LeBlanc having um, Yuna's garment grid. Can we talk about what the fuck a garment grid is? Yeah, we could do that. So it's basically, it's basically like a almost like a license board from Twelve, but you only have a certain amount of spots, and you have to put um, you have to put uh, spheres, dress spheres in the garment grid. To then use those classes. So, like, instead of an FF5 where you had a bunch of job classes and you would choose one and then, like, a supporting one, in this game you have a grid, a grid system, um, the garment grid, and then you also have little dress spheres, little holes in it that you can put these dress spheres that you come across. And each garment grid, um, they each have different layout so if you're like a person that switches between classes pretty quickly often so if you got a white mage and need to switch her out for damage you know you get one that's a little closer and um they also have stat boosts in the garment grid so there are ones that give you higher defense higher attack um random things i would like to say that the garment grid has no real world um meaning whatsoever in final fantasy 10 2 the dress spheres however are real yeah. And so it's not like, okay, so we got one meta game concept based on another concept that's also a meta game, but also actually part of the story. So the dress spheres are spheres from the past having to do with what people wore. I'm so confused by this. And so when Yuna puts on the pop star outfit or whatever outfit, a piece of the past of whatever person wore that thing. Lives on through her. Lives on through her. Right, yeah. It's like a Jeez, like a memory of what they were. And I guess they're all wearing little garment grid backpacks, just like slabs of yeah, metal. Of uh, slabs of fucking... Of stone behind their back <laughs> where you put in the garment grid and suddenly a match click. Like, it doesn't fucking make sense. Uh, God. It's not like, oh, I wore the dress. Like, it's, yeah. it's a sphere... In that makes rock. you yeah i don't know and, well, and and the person who invented it is a child that rides along with them named shinra which is kind of the uh, we talked about the the mini so the connection between ff7 and ff10 he's kind of like central to that and i know in the european areas because i saw a youtube comment european areas he's not named shinra but he's just a kid he is named shinra in the japanese version i believe yes um Either way, like, it doesn't at all make any real-world sense. Well, I guess the uh, the memories living on in them kind of does make sense, because they do, I mean, yeah. Titus is a is a memory of the, a dream of the faith, a memory of the past. And he's right. brought to life by the faith, dreaming him up. Shh, spoilers. Yeah, um, <laughs> and... I, I don't know. I don't have a problem with that part so much. I kind of it's just kind of like the garment grid was just thrown in. Um the dress spheres I don't mind, but the garment yeah. grid seems a little off, but it is kind of a cool way to Mostly I'm talking about it in the sense of story. I think we can talk about the the thing more in, in gameplay as far as its function there, but sorry, go ahead. Um it doesn't really bug me too much. I mean, you need to be able to change jobs somehow, I guess, and that does add ex extra stat boosts, but yeah, it doesn't really it is kind of like a take you out of the moment sort of a thing. Like, I don't know. <sighs> There's a certain amount of belief that must be suspended for the Final Fantasy Well, the games. reason why LeBlanc can put on a fucking concert is because she's wearing the dress sphere of an ancient pop star that Yuna had, and then she the sphere was taken away from her from LeBlanc. It's fucking, it's retarded. That's, that's what it is. 
There's, there's that political correctness we were talking about earlier. Uh, so when Yuna finds a sphere uh, with what looks like Titus on it, she sphere hunts even harder uh, for the missing pieces. Uh, also on the sphere, a dangerous weapon, the Vegna gun, is shown to be hidden somewhere in Spira, uh, which is apparently a weapon powerful enough to destroy Spira, apparently. Right. If only we had this the last time there was something <coughs> mega powerful that was trying to destroy Spira. Oh, yeah. Some weird. Sin, some fucking Godzilla flying creature. Perhaps? I'm surprised Sin, like uh, the Vegna gun, wasn't on its radar. Is the Vegna gun a creature or is the Vegna gun a, a, uh, a robot? <laughs> totally, I honestly don't know. It's totally robot. Yeah. But if we are to believe that it is Godzilla, then he should have been there. So in the midst of all the sphere hunting and the, the LeBlanc syndicate, uh, which functions like kind of a lame Team Rocket uh, attempting to snatch spheres from under our heroes' noses, uh, there are the political factions of the Youth League and New Yevon. The Youth League, which are uh, made up of young ruffian sphere hunters looking f- to educate the world about the past, and New Yevon, who want to hold on to the teachings of the faith that failed them in FF10. I don't see polar opposites there, but... But the game does. Uh, these two fractions uh, never really do any harm to one another or fight for power in any real world sense. But hey, that's FF2, and we're way too lighthearted for any like real political con- con- uh, like conflict. Kind of, I would say FF12 was much better at the the politics yeah. than, than FF102 is, um, and, that, and and this is one of the things that the game is uh, is praised for, frankly. Yeah, it's kind of strange. I mean, especially because, you know, we're we're talking about the collapse of a religion that's been in power for a thousand years. This is truth to these people, to millions of people around this planet. This is the way they've been living is through Yevon. And then you find out Yevon's some fucking asshole. And then you kill the guy. And then... And then everyone's like, cool. Like, it's like, <laughs> uh, you know, it's kind of rough, but yeah, fuck it. I don't care. It's just, it seems odd that they would do that in a game. There should be people having, like, serious fucking problems. Their like, government has been toppled over. Yeah, everything everything that ran the, the civilization before is gone. It's, it's all bullshit. I everyone see a much it. darker sequel to FF10. Yeah, I see everyone trying to pick up the pieces of a shattered religion that they've been following yeah. for the last thousand years. And some people taking advantage of that. Right. And, and there'd like, be, like, different warring factions. Not just, like, whiny Republicans and Democrats. It would be warring factions. Right, everyone trying to vie for power. And exactly. Then that's the part that I like about 10 story. But it's also the part that I wish they would have done more with. Like, I like the idea of, well, this is what this is a post modern civilization, I guess, post uh, what they once were after the big (laughs) catastrophic event of their god being killed. And they just turn shit into uh, fucking like national parks that you pay to go visit. Xanarkin is a, a fucking historical site and there's all these people selling shit and you gotta buy clues to open up doors like what the fuck they they went like capitalist on it it's really weird to me and it's uh, it's only new yevon you don't run into people that still believe in yevon yeah no which like, would exist there would be people still holding on to that and it's uh, <sighs> I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of mad about that. So I I didn't really put any room in here for kind of the little things on the way where LeBlanc was taking the spheres and we were going after them. Right. Uh, there's a couple scenes I really want to talk about. First off, the uh, the massage. The massage. The where you have to massage LeBlanc. You have to pleasure LeBlanc. Mm. I should and, you not. <laughs> and she makes. <laughs> so, it's her relaxation time or whatever the fuck she's on the table and like they've they've uh they've broken into her 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 place the, the leblanc uh syndicate headquarters and um and they're <laughs> you, you just gotta give her a massage you gotta yeah you gotta find the sweet spot uh, so to speak yeah. and you gotta just tag the shit out of it until you know she's done which is the absolute most ridiculous mini game I have ever seen in my life. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty crazy. Um, that part, that was one of the parts where I was just like, just smiling the whole time on the stream, and I was like, oh god, 
I can't believe this. And then it was recorded. <laughs> yeah, that, and then the uh, the Charlie's Angels bit in the beginning where they all like come into frame <laughs> one at a time. There's like one here, the other one slides in, and then they come in and they smile, and then it's like. Wah, 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 wah. Oh god, dude! They do that about three times in the game. Yeah, uh, sucks and the first time. time it's like, "What the fuck is this?" And the last time I'm like, "Ah, oh, Jesus!" Because they do it like right before the end. Yeah, uh, and then the end was like, "It's like, all right, I'm getting into this. I like this. This is cool." And then they're like, "Ha, psych!" <laughs> nope, it's still stupid. <laughs> um, so the, okay, so that's one scene. Another scene I would like to say is near the beginning when they're uh, chasing after his fear, and the LeBlanc Syndicate is also chasing after this fear. There's a part where like LeBlanc or <laughs> the, he's like, "I'll take you to the top." <laughs> Oh yeah, he's got the ship, and like there's this cliff area, and he just like drops him, <laughs> just in the middle of this like tiny little bridge, and Yuna almost dies by falling off. And we get a nice upskirt uh, shot there yeah. as well. Just just one of the many. I mean, the LeBlanc scene included when many of the fan servicey sort of parts to this game. Yeah, I mean, there's a part where they're before they break into the LeBlanc headquarters where they have to obtain. Um, some suits. They do the classic beat em up, steal their clothes thing. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, Final Fantasy trope. <laughs> it is. is one. It is. It's a trope of like anything where you need to sneak in, though. It's like so overdone. <laughs> but um, so you find uh, you're, you're chilling on Mount Gagazet, right? And you go and you find this like this fucking, I don't know, hot springs area. And they decide to take a break since, you know, they, we've been working hard. We're about 12, 15 hours into the game now. Me, at least, trying to do everything like an asshole, and I failed. And uh, <laughs> let's just take a break. Let's chill in the... Yeah, let's chill in this hot spring. And they're sitting there, and they're hanging out. They're, they're in bikinis, which is odd, but I guess they have a bikini dress sphere that I can't activate on command. And there's a part where... Riku is like impressed at the size of Yuna's breasts. <laughs> She's like, "Oh, I know who's got it going on." And I'm like, "What, what the, the fuck f- does that mean?" <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm like, "What is going on with this? Like, why is this?" A- we assume it's her breasts. I'm she pretty just sure like it looks is. at her, and then Yuna like turns. And then like I looks know down. What's going on. Like I hope it was her breasts and not something else. She's like, "Oh, wow." <laughs> What happened to that? <laughs> no, but uh, and it's it's just it's just bizarre that that's in this game. They're they're playing in this little pool in bikinis and like talking about tits. It's it's almost it's like fan fiction written by Kanzen, <laughs> but put into a rated teen game. So he toned it down like hard, uh, like on that brink of what can we get away with? In this you game? bet your ass. So I of course I've 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 moved in with my parents for the summer. And uh, I had to play this entire (laughs) game with the door shut in the middle of summer. The lights out, cock out. In the least least ventilated part of the house, just because I was too embarrassed. Yeah. I just could not handle this game. And then that scene came up, and I... Oh, the the block scene came up, and I had to turn the volume down to, like, one. I was like, I'm not having anybody hear this (laughs) shit. It's, It's just a game... That is so embarrassing. I don't know. I mean, besides people who know about Final Fantasy, I would never, like, just be playing this game in my apartment with, like, roommates. Yeah. I would never do that. Like, it feels wrong. Yeah, the uh, the whole bit about um, FF10 making me feel awkward, like, when I when we reviewed that game with the voice acting and, like, some of the things that happen... This game, like, turns up the heat on that by a thousand. It's like, hey, you remember how 10 made you feel weird? Well, weird feelings for 40 hours. Enjoy. You know, it's nuts that they that they threw some of the stuff in there, and it's just, it doesn't even seem to serve much of a purpose. Like, it's just there. No, and uh, even the comic relief, like, the entire game, I guess, if it, it's like a really awkward kind of comic relief game. Yeah. Uh, the comic relief, as played by Brother, who we, we of course know from Final Fantasy X, who was kind of a weird guy in Final Fantasy X, he's like turned up the heat. Brother is... <laughs> That's just one example <laughs> of uh, 
of what brother has become. Yeah, this guy has gotten into the heavy shit. Like, he is... <laughs> This guy is blitzed. And he's flying see, the ship. His fucking eyes like, are bloodshot. He hasn't slept for like a month. I wish before that party he looked like. <laughs> 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 yeah, and like it just yeah over by his uh, over by his steering wheel. There's like a fucking little mirror and a and a razor blade. Oh he's my just, god! <laughs> he's just stoned out of his fucking mind. <laughs> I can't even make that sound. <laughs> I got to give props yeah. to the voice actor for this guy, though. You were saying earlier, like, that guy went balls to the wall. This guy is slapping the sack I, against the wall as hard as he can. This, It's nuts. I hope he was paid well. I do, too. You know, and it is funny, but I don't know. I think it's probably supposed to be really awkwardly funny. Just like the uh, the 10 scene, the Titus laughing scene, is supposed to be oh, weird. Jesus, um, I imagine dude. that Square Enix does have enough uh i don't know enough clout to know that this is gonna make you laugh but only because of how ridiculous it is like and it it is funny it only works as absurdist humor yeah but that's the far thing. absurdist humor. uh absurd i uh, can't even say it this is like this is like the type of humor this is like uh, this is like carrot top shit this is yeah. this is <laughs> shit that almost everyone hates the st george carlin the st louis ck this is like nutso humor yeah uh this is like kung pao into the fist oh, only God. way worse I, I i don't even like this game makes me feel weird yeah playing it. there's yes. a lot of weird stuff so i mean with all this happening um we do have a new threat of vegna gun um the ultimate weapon it's almost kind of like a, oh, like a weapon in seven, except for it's underground and it never does anything. True, yeah, yeah, and it's not supposed to <laughs> help the planet; it's supposed to destroy the planet. Mm, okay, yeah. So Vegna Gun will blast everybody. Yeah. So I mean, we get Nuge, who is Nuge? the ridiculous haired um, leader of the Youth League. <laughs> this guy's hair is even more nuts than uh, Seymour's, I would say. Looking at the character design, like he's got. This thing goes out and down like I, six feet. I don't think there's any hair that is more no, nuts than Seymour. I think it's going up there, but Seymour had the blue antlers. That's true. The, this guy does have a brown antler, though. But blue antler is one thing. Brown antler is normal antler. So I guess yeah. <laughs> I guess if we're going to go off of that, yeah. Uh, so Nuge uh, goes off to destroy the Magna Gun, but uh, when he does this, he is possessed by Shuyin, which is the tightest looking dude that we saw in the sphere earlier. Um, and uh, chasing after him, Yuna falls into the far plane where the spirit of Shuyin, uh, who I think at this point she still thinks might be Titus. <laughs> yeah, she's a little slow. Uh, the spirit of Shuyin reunites with whom he thinks is Len. Which is the owner, which is the ancient pop star whose dress fear Yuna is wearing. Right. She looks uh, like a, I don't know, like a more Chinese looking version of Yuna, I'd say. It's just like, maybe not though. Maybe it's just a little different. That's how I, I that's how know. I looked at it. I was like, mm. I don't know. She's, uh, she's just kind of got longer hair. <laughs> um, so this famous pop star, Xu Yin, apparently was unable to save uh, in the past, using the power of the Vagna gun, um, and uh, he's he is believe it or not from the real Xanarkand. He he right. belonged to one thousand years in the past. Once again, one thousand years in the yeah. Past. This is the guy that uh, that Titus is based off of. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. I was I was gonna ask a quick aside. Who is the Shuyin Shuyin guy, and why does he look like Titus? Which isn't actually like solidly explained in the game. Eventually, Yuda just accepts that it's Shuyin, but she never really puts up a fight or, like, says, that's definitely Titus. No. So, Shuyin, as far as I can tell, um, I mean, unless this is deep within a, a, a sub-quest somewhere, like a, a side quest, Shuyin, as far as I can tell, is, yeah, the person, I mean, since Titus is a dream of the faith... The, and uh, they were dreaming from real people. Shuyin is the real person. Right. Titus. And Titus is just the image and is also a Blitzball player. And Shuyin's also a Blitzball player. Yeah. So some of the stuff didn't carry over quite uh, 100%. Also, Nuge isn't the one that uh, is possessed by Shuyin. It's one of their other buddies. 
but uh... it's that little blonde guy. I can't remember what his name is. He like I, he has a weird weird voice. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. All right. Corrections time. Uh, the reason uh, Yun mistakes, you know, for Len Len is because of course the, of the dress fear. Um, and also along with that, Yuna begins to relive Len's memories, like, even more and more. Right. Yeah. And uh, eventually she uses her singing ability and uh, songwriting skills to bring the people of Sphera together for a concert. Yes. And this is where we get a thousand words, which I'm going to say is probably the third best lyrical song in the series i'd say okay so you are okay with the song yeah i didn't mind it okay i'm not not okay with the song i think it's an okay song like it's i wouldn't listen to it for fun (laughs) no and i do listen to (laughs) distant worlds Uh, and the ff14 one for answers answers is fucking amazing i listen to that shit just when i'm hanging out so with myself of course yeah of course um (laughs) I, the song is less of the problem and more the situation is the problem for me. Wait, wait, wait. Are you saying that if you were to do a giant concert inviting the whole world of Spira to unite, you wouldn't put it in the, the place where every five steps that you take, you get <laughs> blasted by lightning? You know what? I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think about that part. So that's already one bullshit okay. thing about okay, that They're scene. like, oh, yeah, nice nice try. Everyone, let's meet up at the Thunder <laughs> Plains. Oh, this is going to be a uniting thing. Who do you fucking think I am? You're trying to kill me okay. and all of the new Yevon followers by sending us into this fucking Thunder Plains. Everybody loves Yuna, right? Yeah. Somehow they all come to her call in the middle of the giant continent. To come watch her concert. Oh well, they use the uh, the spheres, okay. the comm spheres. That's so how that's one. Before that, the okay, I would like to say that the song, as you hear it in the game, is fully orchestrated. Yeah, uh, and along with all these beautiful this beautiful cutscene, I, I admit it. It's uh, like visually, it's gorgeous, and uh, the song's okay, right? Uh, beforehand, she's just kind of like humming to herself the song that she's gonna sing. No one knows what she's gonna sing. Yeah. And somehow, when she gets on the stage, an hour after she was, like, humming the stupid fucking thing, suddenly it's fully orchestrated. Yeah. She... Suddenly, like, the band, like, she is singing this thing a cappella in real life. <laughs> she yeah. is, she's going out there singing this thing a cappella. And, okay, you got two options here. One... For the half hour cut that we didn't see, she was in the like the base or the the bridge of the of the fucking ship with like shit tons of sheet music going through and doing the sheet music for every single motherfucking instrument in order to play as her backup. Or it's a made a game bullshit thing where she's actually singing a cappella, but we as the players are watching a full on pop concert. Hmm. So, either way, impractical. <laughs> well, especially because Riku and uh, Payne are sitting there like wet fucking noodles, not doing anything. Yeah. Like, let's go out. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. And then they just chill. <laughs> By the way, even if Len were this world famous pop s- star, I don't believe, I, I don't believe most pop stars. Now, Len might be the exception. I don't believe most pop stars write their background music. So I don't know how Len would know what the instruments are supposed to play. <laughs> that maybe she's just that good. Maybe, maybe. she is the Metallica of pop singers, where it's like everything's ours. We're gonna write it all. I mean, sure we'll steal some from Dave Mustaine, but fuck him. We kicked him out anyway. There, maybe she's just. That I don't know. She could be Michael Jackson. I know Michael Jackson did like the the backup stuff for like he he basically hummed all the parts for his things on personal recordings See, there you and go personal recordings and then he manifests yeah. himself within a sphere so there was a there was a we point where she's sphere. like okay beluga man uh this is uh this is your part <laughs> like just acapella and the guy was like okay <laughs> yeah i got it yeah i'm down yeah i'll write it down <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a B B minor, right? The yeah, impracticality okay, well, of that fucking pop of that pop concert it just it absolutely destroys 
whatever that thing's about. And I, I still have a problem with Yuna being a pop star. I have a problem with that. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't jive. It doesn't seem right. Yeah, well, I mean, it it's is like, only oh, because oh, so she's were, uh... using the sphere, though. I mean, it's not like she's actually a pop s- singer. Uh, it's just the, I don't know, whatever is left behind from a thousand years prior that you're now wearing around your... Yeah, it's it's really odd. It's like it's like some sort of like witchcraft thing where you wear <laughs> it and you get possessed. But in this, she's possessed to be a great singer instead of possessed to, like, kill, I guess. So, I don't know. This is, it's just bad. It's, yeah, yeah. I don't. I'm. I do not have my stamp of approval on that on that pop concert. I don't have any stamps of any approvals on any pop concert where our main character of a Final Fantasy game is supposed to be a pop star. I mean, unless that is the story, like you're a pop star, but she's a sphere hunter, and she's like, oh, you know, I like to sing, so. I'm going to also be a pop star for all these people. Like, Maybe it's kind of like how whenever we come up with a new hobby, we want to make a podcast about it. Maybe she just goes <laughs> full hog. She's like, you know what? I like pop. I like to sing in the shower. I'm going to do this from now on. This is me. Who knows? Maybe she lives with the like, hog. It's got to be bad for her image. And uh, this, Okay, so it's actually bad the, for her image. She's wearing shorts the, uh, that show off like half of her ass in this it's, game. Her uh, no, image is I mean, fucking ruined. Uh, okay, she all right, pissed all right. into the wind on that thing. All right, well, I'm not going to talk about what she wears as, as much as what she does. Um, the So that there's actually three concerts, and we actually forgot about one. There was another concert where... <sighs> they need to let off some steam, apparently, and Yuna needs to dance in right. the middle of the game. And dancing, Yuna, I want to see. And I'm like, I don't want to see. Can we just move on? But instead, we see dancing Yuna, and yeah. she has to put, first off, <laughs> she has to get all the uh, instrument guys together. She has to get her backing van together. Oh, yeah, these and fucking And they're these guys. hitchhikers with these strange instruments just standing in the hallway that can't move themselves somehow, and you have to move them into the elevator to get upstairs to start the concert. Moving these motherfuckers, Schweiss, who thought of the fucking physics I don't know. To move these guys. So it's like bad physics. It's like they, they don't have anything sinking them to the floor of the game. So Yuna has to run around around this terrible camera, which is rounded and trying to get these guys in a straight line. And there's no like pushing movement. It's not like in FF10 when you were doing the puzzles where right, like the, you would uh... come to the statue and push. Yuna is pushing the guys, but she's still just doing her running motion. Yeah. And she's moving these motherfuckers into the elevator. And it looks awful. It plays awful. And then the song that she sings when she's dancing or singing or whatever the fuck is la 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 And I just did a better job than she did. I would like to like to point that out. The uh, Yuna is tone deaf except when <laughs> Len takes over her. <laughs> yeah, you know, this is like uh this is like the part in FF9 where um, where Garnett was singing, and then you're like, oh, la, she has such a beautiful la, voice. La, la. I was like, la, 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 la. you know what's funny, though, is that is supposed to be the song. I think it's it's kind of one of those things where the player, they can, couldn't render it right or something, and the player is supposed to assume that it, it's that the actual song. There's an song. actual song, yeah, but so she's actually singing. La la. But in this game, in 10-2, la, 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 la. in 10-2, it, uh, it doesn't really work the same way because we do have songs that do play, so I don't know. I find it, I find it to be just, oh, it just hurts. Yeah, it hurts, dude. I love ten so much that this this all this shit. I know some people find it charming. I don't. I, I find it uh, painful, painful. So after all this shit with concerts and sphere hunting and and Shuyin and all that other stuff, Yuna, the the Blanc Syndicate, the members of the Youth League, as well as uh, members of New Yevon. Uh, they finally team up to destroy Vegna Gun and the spirit of Shuyin, who controls it. 
right. I guess. And uh, the Shuyan fight's actually pretty sweet. Um, he's since he's uh, Titus from the past. Um, he's got his limit breaks, and that's how he attacks you. And it's it's pretty cool to see those, right? And then he did his uh, his ultimate one. Um, I think it's like Blitz Ace, where he hits a bunch of times, and then he goes up and then kicks the uh, Blitz Ball down into you. And the thing I want to note here is he's holding Waka's ultimate weapon. Uh. That means <laughs> that Waka fucking sold it after all that <laughs> shit I did in Final Fantasy X. That fat fuck sold the <laughs> ultimate weapon to the nemesis did he not think oh yeah maybe i not sell to this guy yeah <laughs> no he didn't he sold to the fucking titus clone and he raped me with it <laughs> with the weapon i spent hours to earn i was like what is this bullshit <laughs> here's waka's best weapon Fourteen ninety nine. <laughs> three easy payments oh, it was God. nuts but uh, no, I did enjoy the. Uh, I did enjoy that. Um, I thought it was kind of cool how they had the same limit breaks, and it was a good. Uh, it was a good fight. Yeah, it was a good fight, and I think the Vegna gun fight was uh, was a good fight as well. Despite the Vegna gun being said to be this huge, uh, terrifying force, is actually kind of an easy final boss. Yeah, when you get uh, when you go through and get the Dark Knight dress sphere, it's really easy. Before that, I'd say don't get drunk and try it because that's what I did. And oh my god. Okay, to get up to Vegnagun, there's this there's this thing where you have to make music, okay? And you have to step on certain platforms to make certain notes kick off. And I was like I was getting pretty drunk by this point. I had like <laughs> nine beers in me and I was trying to figure this thing out and I was just I, I fucking can't. I even pulled up a guide and I still couldn't the first time. <laughs> So I went back, reset everything, and I was like, oh, okay, I can do it now. And then I lost the fight like two or three <laughs> times. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, same same ending as what we'd expect. The heroes uh, vanquish all. We get a, a victory speech afterwards where everyone's super pumped and they want to like, unite as one. Yeah. Spira save. Youth League compromises with New Yevon, I yeah. guess. Uh, and that's the end of the normal version of the game. And we'll talk about the Titus thing in a bit. There are a whole bunch of side quests in this game that add to the story, and I did hardly any of them. Yeah. Schweiss, uh, what did you do? Um, I did some. Okay. All right. So the one I, I know of is that Waka is now a father. Right, yeah. He impregnated Lulu somehow. Like, she let that happen. Yeah, she finally and, got uh, drunk enough one night that uh, was like, you know what? I guess I'll have this disgusting man. <laughs> she hates him in 10. Like, she just fucking loathes this man. Admittedly, okay. it's like uh, they have a thing for each other, but she's like off limits. Pregnancy does not show no. on Lulu at all. I was hoping the boobs would get bigger since, I mean, I want an anatomically <laughs> correct game. But I can't have that. The boobs are the yeah. same. Uh, no, no bulge <laughs> either. So she's carrying that shit like a fucking boss. I guess, especially if it's Waka's child. That fucker's probably like twelve pounds, six <laughs> ounces coming out. Just Big like, Polynesian kid. Yeah, <laughs> he's just fucking ripped. Already like uh. two and a half feet tall. <laughs> he's just hey yeah. <laughs> Already got fucking stubble. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> No, um, there's a there's a thing with like Waka being fat, I guess, and oh, it doesn't yeah. show in the. Uh, in no, the... yeah, they they did this in the Eternal Calm too, where they're like, oh, slightly chubby, chubby Waka, yeah, and then they grab his fat, and it's like, <laughs> 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 that's probably the funniest thing in in Ten Two, I would say, is the little <laughs> sound. Oh, you're a daddy now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fucking touch me, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, so that was one of the side the quests, but yeah. There's a uh, there's a big dungeon in the end where you go into the uh, the Via Empirico or whatever the fuck in um, in Bas oh shit that temple what the fuck is it called it's a B Bavel Bavel yes you go back in there and it's like a massive uh, multi floor dungeon where honestly if you guys are going for the uh, platinum in this game which I didn't get shame on me I know too much work shame um but you can go down there shame. And it's a good place to oversoul because almost every enemy appears down there, so you can get them to oversoul quicker in a smaller area, kind of a thing. And the oversoul is, uh, no, I'll talk about that in gameplay, but 
Um, I did a little bit into that. Mostly I went down there to grab the Dark Knight Dress Sphere, which is, I would say, a side quest. Um, you have to do some intricate things, uh, some movement of pillars and some running and jumping off of different ledges. But you finally figure it out. There's like switches. I followed a guide. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> um, there's that one. There's a In that same area, you can get this platform to go all the way down to this bottom area and grab a ribbon. Um, there's Blitz Ball side quest. There's the uh, Sphere Break um, mini game. Did you play that at all? No. You know what? I'm going to say it. The Final Fantasy X-2 mini games vastly better than Final Fantasy X's mini games. I can imagine any mini game would be better than the Final Fantasy X mini games. Yes, uh, and the, that imagining is accurate. Okay. Um, I thought Sphere Break was actually pretty fun. There's a little tournament that you can do um, where you have to do win three out of five matches to advance to the next round, and then you fight Shinra the little fuck face um, in the final, and he destroys me, right? He just, this kid just lays waste. So I try it again. He lays waste to me again. I try it again. He does the same thing. And I'm like, all right, fuck this. I'll just do it later. So the way this game works is it, uh, you have like four tokens that you have, and they each have different numbers on them, and you need to do a multiplication, a multiple of the token in the middle that's randomly generated. So if I have a four, um, I could do two twos, a four, a three, a one, whatever you want. But if you, there are certain tokens that have this echo ability that gets you bonus points in the match. So the best possible uh, thing to do is probably like getting four, using four tokens to get a multiple of the middle number. Because each time it like raises it by another four that you get bonus points. And uh, it's it's weird, but I thought it was actually really fun. I okay. enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, there's a trophy for winning 10 matches Yeah, of it. your description lost me. <laughs> it's Dude, the tutorial <laughs> is also another 30-minute thing, um, but there's a little bit of math involved, and you need to kind of plan it out and be like, all right, well, I'm going to try three this time, and three is a pretty solid one, I found. Uh, but sometimes the middle token will be a one, so every other token that you click on is going to match it, so it just resets your fucking thing and you lose. But I thought that was a fun side quest. Um... Ah, man, there's all sorts of little mini games on the Calm Lands, like a fucking... There's like a slot wheel machine with little monsters flying by. That thing sucks, but it's there. <laughs> and, uh... So it's mostly the Sphere Break that you're a big fan of. Yeah, I thought the yeah. Sphere Break was actually really fun. Okay. Um, it's a game that, if they had a mini game of, I'd probably play, like, in 14 or something. You, like, have tournaments where you play against each other. That'd be fun. So I want to round out um, the story part of our review with talking about the hidden ending if you get 100%. Now, neither of us got 100% in the game, no, 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 so we no. didn't earn the ending, but YouTube earned it for us, basically. Yeah, um, right. So there are three... Uh, there's actually three different endings in the game. One ending is when you lose to uh, either uh, Vegnagun or to the Titus guy. I'm not sure. Yeah, so You're the only one who saw it since I beat him all the way. Um, yeah, apparently you see like a shadow of... Titus and he goes away in in the far plane or something like that. Uh, you're the one who saw it, so yeah. I've only seen a description of it. Um, the normal ending ends with the sphere uh, getting back together, and then the game just kind of ends, and you never find Titus, which Yuna was sort of looking for Titus through the game, but she was also looking for the sphere with the Chuyin dude on it, and she was also looking to fight Vagna Gun. So, you know, it's all over the fucking place. Right. But uh, this is the good ending. Um, and I'm going to read this description from uh, FinalFantasy.NeoSeeker.com since I just, I just it's, I, I didn't experience it, so I didn't want to write it down. Uh, so, as Yuna is walking in the flower field in the far plane, apparently the player presses X and Yuna will hear a whistle. She looks around to see where it's coming from. And the little faith guy from the first game, he yeah. will appear and tell you that he's, uh, heard your wish to see Titus again. Uh, he will then ask you if you want to see him again and you have to answer. If you really hate Titus and answer, I'm fine with the way it is. Yuna would tell the faith that she doesn't need to see him because he's in her heart. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the faith will disappear, and you'll just get the normal ending. 
assuming that you choose, I want to be with him. The faith will tell you that he'll try to bring him back, but there's no promises. You know, will walk away and you'll see the cutscene for the normal ending. After the credits run through, you'll see the scene at the end of FF10 where Titus is in the water. This time he'll emerge outside of Besaid Island. He'll whistle and swim towards the shore, at which time the uh, the ship comes roaring in and Yuna jumps out right on time and embraces uh, embraces Titus. Uh, Yuna asks if he's the real thing, in which he answers, uh, what do you think? Yuna nods in agreement. Pain and Riku look on, smiling for their friend, and uh, as they're hu- hugging, Waka shouts out from the shore. Most of the population of the island is uh, is there witnessing the reunion, uh, including Lulu and the new baby. Uh, Yuna and Titus agree to go meet them and start running towards the show shore. Excuse me. Titus yells, uh, tells Yuna that she's changed. She responds by saying that a lot of things have happened. Sure. Uh, <laughs> Titus. How many men have you been through with this? Titus yells out that he wants to hear about it. And the camera zooms out uh, and uh, fades out. Now, initially, I was like, how the fuck does this make sense? I didn't know about the faith appearing and you could press X. I had only seen the video at the end. Right. And there is an explanation that we did find on Reddit. Um, This guy thinks that it's because the faith felt indebted to Yuna because she released them from their dreaming at the end of Final Fantasy X. And she also saved them at the end of X-2. Because the little boy slash Bahamut asks Yuna if she wants to meet someone. And that's how you unlock the good ending. So maybe he and the rest of Yuna's aeons uh, that the Faith dreamed up, they, they all dreamed up Titus again? I don't know. As kind of a thank you and compensation for Yuna's work? Anyway, that's his theory. So I, I, I find the, uh, the explanation vague. Um, and they dream him up again or they know some deep dark magic from the la- <laughs> from the from the ancient uh, land of andor or whatever the fuck yeah uh the and somehow titus is back um and i know he's back in the the novel and in the um the radio drama that that come after this after right this yeah game. He's, he's alive again yeah so I find it uh, uh, it's very, very interesting that he comes back. And it doesn't still kind of sort of doesn't make sense, but uh, I guess I'll buy it. Ten I mean, doesn't there really are make... some things about 10 that you just have to buy. Anyway. 10 doesn't make sense in uh, numerous ways anyway. So, yeah, it's all ethereal type. Yeah, magic so stuff. you just have to kind of go with it. Um, yeah. I don't mind the fact that he comes back necessarily. Um, I feel like the rest of the game cheapens some elements of 10 to the point where it's like, well, fuck it. I don't even, it doesn't matter. Sure. Have him come back, bring the little shit back to life. You know? <laughs> um, but now that we have ragged on the gameplay or not the gameplay, the story, we should talk about gameplay a little bit. Well, Trice, do we have overall opinions on the story? Um, it wasn't good. <laughs> I think there were parts where it was interesting. Um, I was interested when I we got to the political intrigue. Unfortunately, it was not handled very well, I would say. It was more angsty, more passive-aggressive than actually aggressive for the most part. There were parts where people were getting up in each other's faces, but, yeah, I don't know, it was like South Park with the, uh, what's his name? Like, come at me, bro, come at me. <laughs> you know, like just this really passive-aggressive way of dealing with it i kind of wish the story would have taken a much darker tone like you were saying earlier and shown us what happens when the pillar of society collapses i don't think this is what happens when that pillar is gone i think it's something much worse and i wish they would have gone into that a little a little darker and a little harder but they didn't and here we are the tone is what i guess some perverts would think of femininity as being that's that's kind of how i feel about it I, I really don't like the tone of the game uh it just it it feels like a betrayal to ff10 especially near the end of ff10 where you know people are disappearing and uh yeah and people actually like fucking die with sin and stuff like that and there's sad moments within Final Fantasy X. I mean, there's some ridiculous moments. I, I would say the voice acting. <laughs> there's some there's some kind of crazy moments that may not seem out of place uh, with, with FF10 next to it. But 
there are moments in FF10 where it, it would just it, it this doesn't seem right to yeah. do. Um I don't know. You would have to compare it to another thing where it was something like super serious and they decided to make a a comedy out of the sequel. Conan the Barbarian and Conan the Destroyer. I haven't seen the Destroyer in years and years. Um, That's my comparison. I think Barbarian is pretty serious. It's sort of serious i think it does kind of i that's a that's a it's a little conversation for another day i'd say that's a similar feel where they come back and they're like all right well fuck it yeah i mean 10 wasn't serious enough to say schindler's list and then like a a comedy about oscar schindler's and his and his failed businesses after after the, the holocaust i don't know man like it's it it's unusual to say the least and uh I know some people find this charming. I don't find it charming. I find it embarrassing. I had to shut my door. I had to turn down the volume during certain scenes. Uh, there was so much. Uh, there was so much disgusting fan service, and I it wasn't servicing me as a fan. It was like, yeah, who is this masturbation to? fan service? This, it's bad. It's just bad. I. I I apologize to everybody who just absolutely loves this game and you you guys I think you're the minority honestly but uh I think most people play the f- I think most people watch that first cutscene and go oh, I'm out I'm out Yeah that's um, basically what I At least the first from time. you know the people that I I know <laughs> I think I think it's mostly just like uh, I'm going to walk away from this one um I guess there are uh, some mildly okay things about it. Some of the cutscenes are very beautiful, um, but even then, there's there's not too many of the fully CG cutscenes. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't I don't think the story is really that great of an aspect of this game. That's for sure. No, and it is a it is a strange thing for a Final Fantasy to have a weak story like this, especially one that has it has story fleshed out. It's just not particularly good like i can understand ff1 very little to no story this game there's no reason really it's just i don't know it is kind of shameless fan service in a lot of ways yeah and there's yeah all right twice on that downer note let's go to gameplay So say what you will about the story in Final Fantasy X-2, and we will say much. Um, <laughs> the gameplay in this game I thought was pretty good. Um, I don't, I don't think it's my favorite, um, and I know it has been pretty hyped as being like a really fun uh, battle system, and I do think it is really fun, but it is slow. Um, I'm used to when I get into Ten's universe, I want like the quick speed, like X kill, X kill, and uh, Ten Two doesn't really offer that. Ten two is more of a more of like a seven battle speed. It's a little bit slower. Gives you some time to plan stuff out and go with it. Now, the return to jobs I think is awesome in this game. I enjoyed that aspect of it a ton. I loved being able to go find the new dress spheres, throw them on. I get the sweet little cutscene where they change clothes and sometimes they're like totally naked and it's weird. <sighs> um. I thought that was cool. I loved getting the new abilities. I liked the way that you gained AP and you unlocked certain abilities while wearing these dress spheres and you could develop your character that way. Kind of kind of sucked that, as, at least as far as my knowledge goes, you can't uh, do cross-class like you could in 5. Remember how we would like have one ability from another class and then like have the samurai ability and like nothing could withstand you? Yeah. It kind of sucks that you can't do that quite so much, um, but there are items that you can pick up. Like one grants you the abilities of a samurai, so you can equip that as the black mage and have the samurai in case you're fighting physical monster instead of elemental. Um, but I did enjoy the way they they brought that back. They brought the job system back, and they lent the or they they borrowed from Final Fantasy VI and I'd say probably nine um, as far as grinding and getting abilities for your characters. Yeah, yeah, it has a similar sort of uh, level up quality as those games do. 
Um, now we talked about garment grids earlier and, um, that's one of the most unusual aspects of this thing. So not only do you have classes with FF5, I think you just equipped two or two or three classes. Depending yeah. You on just you equipped could. classes. Yeah. You were just and, like, this is my um, job now. It's my job class. And, uh, with that, you know, you just had the abilities of the jobs. This one, you have the abilities that you've grinded out for the jobs. There's a shitload of jobs. And then there's also a disc, uh, <laughs> The, the garment grid that limits what jobs you can get and which ones you can switch to at a, at a moment's notice. Yeah. Um, it is kind of nice, though, because unlike five, you can switch mid battle. Um, you can trade from, okay, let's say you're trying to do just a glass cannon team of all warriors or two or all three dark. Uh, I would never recommend that for this game. Dark knights. <laughs> no, I wouldn't either. Um, <laughs> and suddenly you're finding that you're dying and you need to bring out a healer you can just hit l1 throw on the uh white mage class and start healing people up that is one thing i really do like um that and the garment grids uh they do allow a little bit of customization so you get a garment grid and then you assign sphere grid or uh dress spheres dress spheres jesus christ uh (laughs) to the the grid Sphere, and that's sphere, just sphere, sphere, sphere. Yeah, sphere. <laughs> the sphere game, <laughs> and that's just what that grid has now. I mean, you can change it, obviously, but so when I look at it, I'm like, all right, well, let's do Yuna in this one. This one allows higher curing spells. It makes me a little tougher. Whatever. I put all the shit that Yuna is gonna do on that one, and that one's basically Yuna's. And then I throw another one down. That's like, all right, I like Pain being a samurai because she looks awesome in the outfit. I like Pain. And uh, let's go Samurai on this one, do a couple others. Um, let's do Warrior, do this, do that. Give her more damage, give her more defense, I'd say, because um, she's my damage dealer. I need her to stay alive. And then for Riku, um, I really liked I liked her costume for the Black Mage. I did. She's like in a witch outfit. I think it looks cool. Okay. And uh, <laughs> so I used her as that a lot, but then sometimes I need to change to uh, the Warrior. So on her sphere grid or a sphere grid i'd have both of those pretty close to each other in case i got into a fight where magic's not going to do it um you you just swap it out i did enjoy that uh quite a bit i did find myself just sticking to a garment grid when i found one i was like okay this one's the garment grid that's two attackers and one healer that's like the thing yeah, there are. There's only a few cases where I ended up changing it, and uh, it was just for those extra bonus stats. Which by the end, when I had went down to get the uh, Dark Knight Dress Sphere, which is legit, yes. by the way, uh, this thing you do a little bit more damage than everything else. Plus, you have an AOE attack that just wrecks the uh, tusks on uh, <laughs> Vegnagon because this is like a boar creature, boar bot, and. Um, yeah, I, it's, it is kind of just stick to the one. I, I changed it like twice, I yeah. think. And I feel like with FF5 and with FF3, there was more need to switch the the jobs around. And in FF10 too, you needed a white mage almost entirely. Now, I know there's an alchemist class that you can get that's better than the white mage as far as like healing ability is concerned. But you do have to do a lot of side questing for that. You got to do some chocobo breeding, I believe, oh, God. in order to, in order to get that motherfucker. So it was kind of like, okay, I'm gonna just have Yuna just be the white mage the entire game. Yeah, I used to um, pray constantly. So, so in that way, it kind of limits you almost. And then most of the status effects from the enemies, they're just kind of FF10 status effects. So there's there's rare times when you have to use an item, and it's something that the white mage can't handle, which is usually had to do with speed effects, so like stop and shit like that. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I wouldn't. I mean, unless there's some fucking awesome blue mage spells uh, that, and of course, I I've avoided the blue mages since the beginning of these playthroughs. Oh come um, on. You know, I mean, unless there's an awesome blue mage spell, I'm gonna stick with my with my damage. So. I had warriors for a long time. I tried out the samurai and didn't really care for it as much as I did the warriors. Oh, like, really? The warriors had um, their abilities with the status effects were I thought were much better. Uh, yeah, there's one for samurai though that brings them back to their original stats. So you know how when uh, when you get a monster that starts like strength up, starts casting strength up on itself, and it starts doing a shitload of damage. Yeah, you could put dispel on. Uh, I don't think dispel works. Because it's not a spell; it's like a, 
it's a status change of sorts. And you could also do power break. You could which, do which might have been warrior, might have been. It was warrior. But it might have okay. So I was I get the dark knight mixed up with warrior because eventually I just switched to the dark knight. It was warrior, but with the samurai, I was able to just reduce it back to their original status. So like in some of those boss fights where they're like tanking up like fucking crazy, mm-hmm. I just hit them with that ability and they would just they would melt back into their original form. So it was pretty cool. And then you have the gill toss. Um, it's expensive. It's like. Uh, each gill is a damage kind of a thing, and gill in this game is is pretty rare. I'd say it's a lot harder to farm gill than it is in some of the other FF games. Yeah, that is a good point. I mean, getting items is something that's kind of a, eventually you you want items, and items are expensive in this game. But Economy you find items. Wise, you find it. items everywhere though. So and chests respawn, so it's not a big deal. But I did feel like wow, I just. I don't have that much money. It's one of those Final Fantasies. I'm not running out of money, which is makes it not quite one of those those Final Fantasies <laughs> FF2 with the in prices. But yeah, I did have nine hundred dollars for a night. Yeah, I'm like fuck you, man. What is this? A f- <laughs> is this Playboy Mansion? I don't, I don't fucking think so. I don't think Playboy Mansion charges. Yeah, probably not. Uh, it's just invite. Oh, that's awesome. Where's my invite, Hugh? Come on. I, I thought we were close. I think that I think actually the Playboy Mansion was recently sold. Um, oh my god. Yeah. I, Hopefully I, it was Dave. If it's Dave, we'll get in. It's not Dave. It's not Dave. God damn it. Um, oh, what was I going to say? Okay, so I would basically stick to the same classes. So to me, it almost was like FF five, where it's like I got my classes that I'm going to stick with. And this is it. Yeah. yeah. And this is and this is it. White Mage and Samurai was what it was in FF five. Um, with some exceptions based on the boss, but you right, don't have yeah. so many of those exceptions based on the boss. I mean, you brought up one point, but I, I can't, I can't remember a point in which I needed a different class. Yeah, and FF three did that. There's points when I wanted a different class. FF three did that intensely too, where you'd get but, to a certain spot and it's like, hey, you got this unlocked, and the next boss would be like a flying creature, and, and you it's got like, the dragoon. oh, you should have been using this one. Yeah, and it's like, well, fuck, I didn't know, so I'm gonna have to rough it. <laughs> um, this game, you're right, the bosses weren't. It didn't really lend itself to making me need to those new abilities necessarily. Although I could see myself going through and playing 10-2, fighting, and getting all the abilities unlocked just to see what kind of shit I can get away with. I think there's a caveat here, though, that we didn't do all the side quests. So there might actually be uses that we don't know about as far as the other classes are concerned. Right, yeah. Um, However, I feel like I beat the ending boss quite easily. And I didn't need anything else, and it's I've been playing the game the same way the entire time. And that same way the entire time was Y Mage cast Protect and Shell, um, and then you do your power breaks and armor breaks. Well, and you didn't then beat you him attack. that way though. Uh, up until I got the Dark Knight, and then I just did the Darkness spell over and over again. Yeah, once you once you die to the guy, you realize yeah. okay, I need something else. I didn't die to the ending boss at all. Did you go pick it up before you fought him then? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, the game was an easy cheese for me, and I didn't feel like I needed to use any of the other things. So although it's well praised for its gameplay and it's a, you can do anything that you want, it's like, well, if I'm just trying to play the game and beat it like a normal player and not not twice core, as, uh, as you could say, then uh, then you don't really get to go into those aspects where it's like, oh, I can do this and this and this. I, I actually, I felt the Garment Grid was limiting um, in its own weird way, mostly because it just it just felt like busy work to me. And, yeah, setting uh, it up was like, oh, Jesus. And like switching classes were like, some of the Garment Grids are set up that you have to go into one class before going to the next class. Yeah. And it's like, well, why? <laughs> <laughs> Why was this a good idea? I mean, I like the stat boost. I definitely like the stat boost with the garment grids, but I feel like maybe we could have lived without the stat boost and instead had specialized bosses based upon different uh, garment grids. Yeah, which is something that Ten did a lot. I mean, there were enemies that were built for certain characters to kill. If you're not, uh, you know, 120 hours in and everybody's the same fucking character, right? Um, you've got the blobs that Lulu kills. You've got the flying guys that walk a snipes from the from the air, and then you've got the fast shit that Titus hits, and the armored stuff for Oron, and so on and so forth. Um, 
it is kind of a weird thing that this game didn't do that as much. I can still I can still see myself going through and seeing what I can do because I did like the battle system a fair amount. I thought it was pretty fun. Um, I'd probably jack up the speed like nuts if I can, um, but I, I thought the gameplay was pretty solid in this game, and I think it's the one thing that I would recommend people play it for. <sighs> That that seems to be the one thing where it's like, okay, don't bash FF10 too. The battle system's great, but I loved the battle system for Final Fantasy X. It was a faster system. I put the speed all the way up in this motherfucker, and I put the fucking cutscenes down with the dress yeah. uh, changes. Still had to watch dress changes for the first dress change in a battle, which is like bizarre to me. Uh, unless I click something wrong, I was like, what the fuck? I thought I turned these things <laughs> off. But uh god that that one pissed me off. I was like I thought I changed this. Um waiting turns uh it does seem slower. Um so no I mean I prefer systems that are fast. I think that's why I in my opinion so far through these playthroughs Final Fantasy 13's battle system is my favorite. And that's because it's a fast motherfucker. And so it's exciting to play the game and sometimes frustrating because of that, but it's exciting to play the game. Final Fantasy X 2 on certain bosses, it's like, okay, let's wait the turn for the bad guy real quick. And yeah. it's like real quick. It's like, this is taking, this is taking a little bit here. And Final Fantasy X was turn-based. And so it was just like, bam, bam, bam. And occasionally you would have to wait for the bad guy, but you would see the turns and you would know that like everything is... Right, yeah, That's it, would what's be, it would be a lag because of movement, not a lag because of weight. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and once again, the enemies were more specialized. Even with like magic creatures in this game, you, you'd still just blast them with a warrior or with a. I, I hardly ever had to use a black mage. I used it because I thought it was. I don't know. I just enjoyed it. So yeah, so you wanted to try it out as a. Yeah, so I mean, I kind of disagree. Um, I do think the battle system could use a little pick me up as far as <laughs> speed goes. It's no Final Fantasy IX though. It's not. I didn't get in there and I wasn't like, oh, this thing. It's the fuck. But I was like, ah oh, man, this is this is a little laggy. Um, I don't know though. I I do I do stand by the uh, story's not great. Gameplay's pretty solid gameplay is pretty so i guess yeah pretty solid is how i would describe it but i don't think it's like worlds better or on par with ff5 i think it might be closer to ff3 status but ff5 definitely not okay well at least it doesn't deal with like the 10 battles you have to go through in order to change over classes like an ff3 yeah only our version though only the north american yeah uh, I was about to go off on a tangent about FF3, but we'll talk about it on Nude Clan. So listen to Nude Clan, guys, because there's something about Final Fantasy 3 I want to talk about there. Um, so items in this game, as we said, was they were kind of rare, or they're not that rare to pick up items, but they are expensive, and stores don't stock nearly as many items as you want <laughs> or the diversity of items that you want in this game. So definitely exploring is a huge part of FF10 too. Uh, and side quests are a huge part of FF10 too. One that I didn't really get into and you got into a little bit. Um, but side quests basically is this game uh, or are this game. They're, they're, there's the story and it's a very thin story and it's a very short story. Yeah. Um, but as you go along, you can just go into other areas. There's little stories having to do with, like, Mushroom Rock Road and shit like that that you can get into, uh, usually having to do with the New Yevon um, Youth League conflict. Right, yeah. um, in quotations. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, I think when people talk about gameplay, they might also be talking about that. And that, I think, is... Um, although I didn't explore it to its fullness, I believe that that's probably the thing that sets this game apart is that in the midst of all these Final Fantasies that are super linear, Final Fantasy IX, Final Fantasy X, um, uh, 13, of course, super linear. 12 is more linear than I think people think. 12 is not nearly um, as linear as X2, That's though. I disagree. I think 10-2 is more linear than 12. You think 10-2 is more linear than 12? Fuck yeah, I do. 12 is wide open. You only have to go to one place at a time in 10-2 to beat the 
to beat the five chapters. There's a million places to go on the ship. It says, basically, the world is your oyster. Go where you want. And there's different side quests based upon what chapter you're on. That's insanely nonlinear for a Final Fantasy game. I think 12 is more nonlinear, but... No, 12 is not nonlinear. You can't just go wherever you want until the end of the game. It's like 10 in that way. You can go wherever the fuck you want. Yeah, you can walk there. You're right. You're right. But in this you game, chocobos, and and there's there's much more story aspects in the side quests, and I think you're totally incorrect. Twelve is more linear than it seems. I would say the same thing about nine. Yeah, nine is more linear seem than it linear seems. Linear at all, so any linear. But ten two is not a linear game. Yeah. There is a small story that I guess you're sort of. Yeah, you might as well do it, but the thing that people do in this game they try to get 100 percent. they try to experience everything in this game there's a lot of other things to experience in this game more than just the five chapters that mm, what my 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 time for this game was under 20 hours yeah uh, i can't even remember it was i feel like it was like 17 hours or something like that it was something real fucking short and it's like there's there's like the story part is tiny it's everything else that fills up someone's game time. There's so much other stuff to do, and it's not all at the end of the game. You have the airship from the beginning. So, no, I totally disagree with you. I think it's a, a mu- it's like a super nonlinear Final Fantasy. Yeah. This is what people, I, I think, some Western gamers are dying for. I mean, they're probably not dying for the J-pop uh, girly atmosphere, but they're probably dying for all the side quests and the and the bonus stories and and all that other stuff you can get into should you desire. Yeah, I don't know. There's just a certain element of linearity that's associated with a list of locations and clicking on each list to go there. But even outside of the hot spots, there is stuff to do. There's occasionally, stuff. yes. But some of that stuff doesn't unlock until later, so that's thus true. making it a linear path to advance. That's true, yeah. It there's... is less linear than most of the games we've seen recently, though. Four definitely. out of the five sections, you can go wherever you want, and there's going to be side quests involved with a lot of those areas. And I don't know if side quests make it non-linear, And they're different, se, usually. Because they're side quests. But there is a shitload of side quests in this game. I agree with you there, and that that is where a bulk of the game is. Even only doing... Oh, I think I got like 20 more percent of the game done than you. That added like 15 hours easy. Just just time, just gone doing these little things and uh a lot of it was Gunner's Gauntlet which I <laughs> I hate, but there is a way to uh to manipulate it, thank God. Um and I found that way thanks to some beautiful beautiful YouTuber out there that showed me the path. Um but there that is kind of what makes this game this game and I, I, I think it's I think it's worth praising for that as well. I mean, you don't have to go through the story. And it makes grinding less bullshit, which is the same thing that I think the hunts do in 12. Or even the beastary being like, oh, hey, unlock all of it. It's like, all right, well, I can. And then when I do, I'll be leveled up enough to go. 10-2, it's do some side quests, fight the, fight the hotspot boss, go to the next area do some side quests, fight the hot spot. So it does mm-hmm. it does help a lot in that aspect, whereas 10, not so much. 10, you just kind of did the standard uh, wait and grind until you level up, and then it's like, all right, now I can beat this boss. Now we can go. So I do, I do think um, it's really solid in that aspect as well because there's nothing worse than just grinding to grind. Like, I don't mind... <sighs> grinding while i'm doing a you know even a fetch quest something to keep my mind off of the fact that i'm just sitting here pressing x and uh, i think 10 2's side quests really help out with that because a lot of them are very combat heavy and you're running into a lot of fights while you're doing these so it's a good way to distract yourself from the grind so to speak mm-hmm. all right so uh w- one last thing i want to talk about is the, I'm sure there's super bosses out there, and oh, yeah, we didn't get are. to them. Um, the difficulty in the main story of the game. Wow, did you find this game difficult, or nearly um, as difficult as FF10, or less so, or what? Ooh, ten's pretty easy for the most part. There's a few bosses that are tough. Okay. Um, I would say before I realized that I can't just go to the hot spots, it was brutal. Because I went to the Xanarkand one, and 
I just got crushed over and over again by that fucking dude. And just like you, I don't remember doing much on the in the way of side quests last time I played Ten Two, and I remember just breezing through that fucking tyrant in there. And this time he crushed me, so it seemed like it was a little bit difficult, but when I started doing the side quests, when I got a new chapter open up, I'd just kind of check each area and yeah. hit any side quests that I found, and that that made the game pretty easy. Uh, the only time I had trouble, I died to the final boss, I think twice, um, on that very late drunken night uh, with the warriors. I might have been able to pull <laughs> it off. Um, if I wasn't your defensive spells were you were not keeping up on that shit I, and I, I was did. watching your stream and I was like why isn't he casting shell what is wrong with him I was casting shell oh you you cast it like once but the the, the spells will go away yeah I know they wear off man. yeah and you gotta keep up on that shit. I was too drunk man I know you were I know and the damage uh, was too much I don't think uh, but don't... I'm telling you I was I was distraught watching that gameplay I was like <laughs> oh my god he can pull this off he's just I don't know what he's doing. Why is he doing this? It's too much with the uh, the tusks. It is. They they do too much. They allow him to do way too much damage in the end. Taking him out is the only way you can live. Yeah. I know you don't realize how brutal it is because you only did it the easy way with the Dark Knight. But it's fucked up because they hit you with the thing and everyone can't see. No one can hit. So I have to do a fucking remedy and get rid of all the status effects so that that motherfucker can hit the tusk so that the fucking remedy situation is remedied and I don't have to keep throwing them out. So it's, that was a little rough. Um, but once I got the, once I got the dark Knight, there wasn't really anything in my way. Um, there are super bosses and there are, they are supposed to be pretty intense, but I didn't dive deep enough into the purifico area to really find him. So, so so as our general thing is that the gameplay is good um you seem to like the gameplay more than i do um not that i dislike it but uh there's definitely more to explore in the gameplay than what we got to and so maybe for those people who did explore that maybe this game looks more of like a big gameplay sort of game you know what i mean it's yeah uh maybe it's just uh just better for those people <laughs> Yeah, and the side quests that I did do were were enjoyable for the most part. Okay. It's, I didn't have a problem with them, so maybe maybe that would skew our uh, overall. I don't think so, though, because story is a separate thing from the side quests. And sure, they have little inklings here and there, like the Macon being dead, you know, whatever. Stuff like that. It's kind of obvious, but uh, it does add some element of story. But for the most part, it's it's what makes the gameplay that's what makes the gameplay solid. Yeah. I, I am glad that uh, the gameplay was at least bearable after uh, having to scrub through that story and through the, the the dialogue and through the Charlie's Angels bullshit that the gameplay was also not... That the gameplay wasn't terrible on top of that. Yeah, that would have been rough. It would have been rough. All right, Schweiss. Well, I think that's going to be it uh, for this episode uh this is uh we're at an hour and a half right now and oh, really? uh yeah so we're gonna have to split this this baby in two so um we will see you guys next week next week we will talk about design the music uh we'll answer questions we'll talk about the legacy of the game our overall thoughts and finally the ranking Ooh, the sweet, sweet ranking. All right. So as a reminder, make sure you guys go to YouTube.com slash Ultima Final Fantasy, Facebook.com slash Ultima Final Fantasy. You can tweet me at Joseph Egolier. Me and the show, but of course the most important part of the show, me, at UFF Podcast. <laughs> you can support us on Patreon where a dollar a month gives you the episodes as soon as we're done mixing them. And... Uh, Everything can be found at UltimaFinalFantasy.com. Be sure to check out our other shows, Nude Clan, uh, our video game podcast. Just just put in Nude and put in Clan into iTunes or Podbay or whatever the fuck you get your podcasts at. Please, God, listen to that show. It's amazing. Okay, yeah, It's a fun show. Um, really we also have super sexy swinging fan fiction where you guys are, are reading uh, listener submitted fan fiction right now. Yes, I indeed, we are. A sonic fan fiction. Yeah. Not and, erotic uh, this one. I believe on Tuesday, me and Drew are going to be recording an episode of the Godzilla podcast oh, after finally. after a small hiatus. Small? It's been like a month. It's 
been like six weeks. Oh, has it been even more? Than yeah. Month? Jesus. Um, All right. Anyway, we will see you guys next week. Until then, though, enjoy the grind. This has been another production of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. The show is produced by Joseph DeGolier and Caleb Schweiss with music and editing by Joseph DeGolier, parodies and clips from their respective authors, of course. You can get all of our episodes as well as our Let's Plays at ultimafinalfantasy.com. You can also contact us on Twitter at UFF Podcast as well as our contact page on our website. Be sure to subscribe and review our podcast. Your reviews may get read on the show and look forward to the next episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast.